Good evening, everyone. How are you? Okay, let's try that again. He got a really good clapping at everything. All right, I'm gonna, I'll be back. Hold on. <coughs> okay. Good evening, everyone. How are you? Lovely, lovely. I think it was a couple decibels louder than yours, even though you rock. Anyway, <laughs> what a lovely evening. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kennedy Center's Millennium Stage on the Reach Plaza. Tonight's performance is part of the Kennedy Center's Reach Opening Festival open, running through September 22nd. Thank you for all for coming out to experience the people we are celebrating First Nations cultures with us at the center. Yeah! I would like to let you know that immediately following the performance at 710, to your left, we will have an outdoor installation performance by Amrita Happy entitled An Occupation. Then at 7.30 here on the main stage, we will welcome the Canadian electronic music sensation, A Tribe Called Red, opening with our own DC-based powwow drum group, Uptown Boys. Yeah. <laughs> Closing our day, we will feature In the Roundhouse, contemporary Native American music with Don Avery, Thea Hopkins, Larry Mitchell, and Ty Defoe at 8.30 p.m. inside Studio K. And now, best-selling Hawaiian musician and hula teacher Kiali E. Reichel brings to the stage his... Did I... Did I do it wrong? <laughs> We're not the language police. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm sorry. <laughs> He will bring to the stage his award-winning music and mus musicians and dancers. But before we begin, we would like to take a moment to acknowledge the land and the first peoples of the land. We acknowledge that we are standing on the traditional land of the Nakachtank and Piscataway peoples, past and present, and honor with gratitude the land itself and the people who have been the stewards of this land throughout the generations. And now, take it away. I do equally, Maganaka o Mauna Hina, eh, Hina, no paha o Avale, no, eh, Hina, no, eh, Paga, eh, Eda, eh, Ali, Ala, eh, and he, and Uvale, no, eh, Aloha Kako. Wow, this place is far. <laughs> it's been such a long time since we've been here. So, ano aiki aloha ya kako apau aloha. Hapai vau iku uleo ya oko pakahi apau. Na poe, na kupa o nei ya aina. Na oivi o nei ya aina. Na po e o Hawaii na kama ai na kama ai na na malihini ke kahi mihele mai ke yala. So mahalo to all of you for coming, for combing your hair, brushing your teeth, and putting on the correct panty and bebedis. Yeah, or not. We hope in the next hour we get to um, take you back home a little bit. So whether you come from Niihau a i Hawaii. Yeah, and every place in between, this next hour is for you especially because I know some of you miss home. Yeah, so if you miss home, you know what? Oh, go home. Easy. This melee takes us to the east end of our island of Maui, Maui Nui Akama, a place called Kowali. Aloha, 
many people to mahalo for bringing us all the way back home from Maui um, and Oahu as well. We'd like to feature uh, the ladies of Halau Ke Alau Kamaile to do a song that was written by one of my colleagues, Kumuhula Iliahi Paredes. In this mele, he extols the beauty and, and shows his love um, through Hawaiian poetry for one of his teachers. And you know, for us, our mentors, our teachers, and you know, not just school teachers, but people that we meet sometimes in random. Or is there such a thing? Yeah. But I firmly believe that people are placed in our lives by our kupuna, by our almakua, our ancestral deities, to, to make sure that we have a good life, to make sure we stay on the right path, yeah, whenever we step on this stage, we always bring our kupuna with us as best as we can because we cannot do this by ourselves. So, in that spirit, this mele is called Mele Akapu Uvai.
KFC chicken. That's okay. If it makes me sweat, it'll make me lose weight. I just turned 57 years old. <laughs> And I'm letting my hair grow out gray. So right now I'm feeling a little bit like I look like Corella Deville. But gotta embrace. Those of you who come from the island of Oahu, this is for you. Oh, 
So mahalo all of you for coming out and uh, supporting this amazing event. You know, the last time I think I performed on stage was like seven months ago. And so these guys went dangle the carrot. Yeah, they went dangle the aku bone to come all the way on this side. Because it's been over a decade, I think, it's the last time that we came to the East Coast. I'm kind of in semi-retirement because I got my AARP card. I'm an official member of ARP, so I get five cents off my Starbucks coffee. Woohoo! Chihu! <laughs> but that's okay. As long as I look down and I can see my feet, I'm good. I see a lot of familiar faces too um, that I haven't seen in many, many years. I see my friend way out over there smiling at me in the black. Aloha e laakea. <laughs> I see you, I spuck you. This melee takes us to, back to my home island. You know, for us, almost all of our songs, in fact, all of our songs have to do with environmental kinship. And we utilize metaphors of winds and rains and ponds and clouds um, to express our emotion, to express our desires. Um, and to leave a little bit of a travelogue in our lives so that a hundred years from now, hopefully, people will take a look at the songs that we've written and when go, oh, yeah, I remember that place because that place may not exist anymore a hundred years from now. And that's why we have to malam our aina. We have to take care of our land as best as we can. Environmental kinship is one of the ways that we do it. I live in a place called P.E. Holo. It's about 3,800 feet above sea level. It gets down into the 40s um, at night, so you gotta have um, uh, a mink malo. And gotta have fireplace, or at least really big dogs that you can cuddle up with. You know, the little chihuahua kind? No, cannot. And right below our house, a few miles down the road, is a place called Kalena. And the uh, Kalena Ponds are famous in chant and in mo'olelo, in story, um, for being a site that many of our ali'i are chiefly ones who travel the islands, um, oftentimes would stop at Kavayo Kalena and bathe because it wasn't too hot, it wasn't too cold, it was just right. Yeah. And so I wrote this song as a gift and as a remembrance a few years back to bring back into our consciousness all of the things that make P.E. Holo special. Well, it goes like this.
Another example of Aloha Aina, love for the land, love for that which feeds us. Song written by Kahikina de Silva when she visited our island of Maui many, many years ago. You know, for us, yeah, local people, local style, whenever we meet a local person for the first time, what is the first thing we ask them? Who you? Yeah, who you? And then, what's the second thing we ask them? Where you from? Yeah? Those two things, ancestral identification, land identification, is important to us because then it connects us in a, in a way that hard to describe. But anyway. Meligos Laris. Hanno hanno ma Thank you. 
Mahalo, mahalo nui. Like I mentioned earlier, a lot of songs that are written oftentimes have a double, sometimes triple, and sometimes even deeper meaning than what's on the surface. It's a very Hawaiian thing, it's a very Polynesian thing that we just don't come out and say, Oh, you pretty. Yeah, we have to compare you to a blossom. We have to compare you to the, the shining rays of the sun as it's going down on the, on, the, on the ocean. You know, things like that. If you're a bolo-head man, we don't say, hey, you bolo-head, eh? We say, wow, the skin of the drum is really tight. <laughs> or, or... <laughs> My, how the moon shines brightly in the sunlight. Yeah, you see, see, that's the nice way of saying that you're bald-headed. Yeah. So same thing when it comes to love and lovemaking. Uh, this song utilizes the imagery of fresh water. Yeah, and how we need water, like how we need to make love all the time. Kind of, sort of. Yeah, because, you know, those things are important. Yeah, the procreational, the kind, is good. And the recreational, the kind, is good, too. We feature my cousin, Miss Aloha Hula, 2009. <laughs> and we're going to have the other Miss Aloha Hulas come out, too, Bombay. Oh, 
Now you notice that I like my dancers fluffy. Yeah, because that's the real world. Yeah, so of that trio, we still get one we're working on. Yeah, we gotta feed them a little bit more poi, a little bit more koele palau, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, she catching up pretty soon. Maybe five more, baby. That'll do it. <laughs> Continuing our tradition, a long-standing tradition, actually, of setting music to ancient chant. This one is no exception. We've credited Ke'alaku Kona, the late Kumuhula Ke'alaku Kona, who hails from the island of Maui, um, with being the first one to put mu this one to music. Go something like this. Oh yeah, you know, and I forgot to tell you that anybody dance hula in here, if you like, come dance. Dance! Just, just come. Yeah, just go over the barricade. I'm gonna make them let you come up and stuff. So if you like dance over there, you like go out, climb up there, go ahead. Just kidding. No look now. No luna e kahale kai no kama aleva na na kama kaya mo ano nui kale huala ano ho ike kai o mali o ai te tua ela kale hua ilai la la ilai la ho i e ala ha e kai. Na na kama kaya mo ano nui kale hua. 
You know, when we first decided to put that on CD, we got plenty of heat from um, oh, some people. But my, my whole thing was, make your own album then. Yeah? You know, we, we try to make sure that we, we bring old texts into the modern context, yeah? And so, in doing so, we hope to expand audiences um, and to increase Ike, yeah? So, you know, if you do this as a hula kahiko, if you do this as a hula awana, then you have to research it as such. And so that was one of the main reasons why we decided to, to buck a little bit with tradition and put it on the album this way. This next mele um, was written several years back for my mom. They say that one of the greatest gifts that you can give in our culture is the gift of your voice, is the gift of song. And we do this mele as uh, in the styling of what we call a hula kolani. Yeah, the hula kolani was done in front of high-ranking ali'i. Yeah, oftentimes hula kolani are done for the deities. And we do this on our knees. It looks easy, but it's not. For those of you who dance hula, you know it hurts. It's itai, 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 all the way. Mele goes something like this. Ka 
Mahalo, mahalo nui. You can notice that plenty of the songs that we do, not all, but a lot, uh, come from our island of Maui. And uh, this is yet another example of old text brought into modern context. This, uh, this next mele was attributed to Kauhaili Kua, who was one of the um, court dancers for King David Kala Kaua and who was the great-great-grandmother, I think, of um, Uncle Eddie Kamai. And in this mele, she extols the beauty and the power of a mo'o wahine. Yeah, people think that she's a mermaid, but we really don't have mermaids in our culture. Yeah, and so we think actually it's a mo'o wahine, a lesser mo'o, and her name was Kananaka. And so she used to go out and surf in the, in the surf of Uo, right outside of Lahaina. And oftentimes, if she picked on you, some people thought that they were lucky that this beautiful girl from the Pico up, naked, was loving on them. But what they didn't see from the Pico below was what would drag them in the water and leave them there. So if you see a naked lady in the water in Lahaina, get out. Everybody like hula? Hula. Oh, 
You know, time goes by fast when you're having fun. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity before we finish for the evening um, to introduce everybody up here on this stage because without them, I can do any of this. Yeah, we cannot just cook here by yourself. Yeah, it takes a village no matter what it is. And so over here on bass, we have my Uncle Moses Kane. You know, this year, 2019, marks the 25th anniversary of the release of Kawai Punahele, our very first CD, long time ago, OMGs. Where has the time gone? When, uh, when we first started doing this, I didn't have gray hair, I didn't have gray eyebrows. I was a little bit thinner and a little bit taller, actually. I went and did my 57-year-old checkup with the doctor, and he goes, eh, hey, you shrunk. <sighs> I was already hobbit fraggle size. Now I guess I'm going to be, I don't know, Papa Smurf. Over here on six string guitar in the middle, we have brother Josh Kahula. <laughs> on six string guitar here, we have brother Sean P Pimentel. I like to call them the Supremes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> over here, we have Kikai Robinson over here on the far left. Our brother from Anatomara, brother Lance Winston in the middle. <laughs> and our student, our chanter, our dancer, our singer, all kinds, this one. She's like a quadruple threat. Yeah, this is Nalei Pokipala over here. 
We also want to say mahalo to all the ladies of Halau Ke Alau Kamaile. Um, they worked hard. And also, you know, oftentimes I don't usually give them a set list to, to take with them. So sometimes they ask me, oh, what do we have to dance? And I said, you have to know everything. <laughs> so practice everything. <laughs> this mele we'd like to leave you with. Um, it's written by Auntie Leigh Collins. It talks about her love for her kane. We send this out to each and every one of you. Mahalo for coming out tonight. Mahalo ya oko pakahi apau. Love each other. Aloha kikahi kikahi. Kukia imauna ya. Mahalo. <laughs> ah, hey, you guys, boss here. Mahalo, mahalo, Nui. You want to do it? You want to do an encore? <laughs> All right, but we got to say it in Hawaiian, right? All right. So that is Hanaho. Hanaho.
Give him another round of applause. Yeah, he got to try, he tried. Yeah, that's good, <laughs> mahalo, mahalo. For the, the effort, the effort is good. Yeah, that's how, yeah. Um, the last few minutes that we have on this stage, I'd like to send a shout out to all of our kia'i who are on the Mauna, on Mauna Kea. For those of you who may not know, you know, us indigenous people have been, have been barraged the world over. Up on Mauna Kea, they are holding space, the kia'i. It's a very tense time. We're in 50-something days holding space, saving our Mauna. We're not against science, yeah? We're against desecration. We are, we are against that. And we have to be the ones to decide what is sacred to us. And so, for those of you who are so inclined, we're going to spend the next couple of minutes, instead of singing a song, we'd like to do a little bit of protocol to join with what's happening up on the Mauna at this time. And so, if you don't know, or if you don't know, sorry, I'm speaking pidgin. <laughs> yeah, don't know equals don't know. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, this is the symbol, yeah, of Mauna Kea, Mauna Kea, Mauna Wa Kea, yeah. And so we're going to be yelling a few things at you, and when you hear us yelling at you, whatever you hear, yell back. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how it works. I'd like to call the girls up. Um, one of the chants that we do is one that um, talks about what we call Huli Hia. Hulihia means to be overturned and dis be destroyed. And sometimes hulihia, whether it be in your personal life, whether it be um, in your job life, whether it be in government, whatever the case might be, or in the environment, hulihia sometimes has to occur so that new life can come from that kind of hulihia, that kind of destruction. And so we bring in the fire goddess Pele, the, the, the Wahineo Kalua, the woman of the pit, yeah, to come and hulihia everything that doesn't work for us, yeah, so that Hiiaka, her sister, can come and bring life back to whatever was hulihiaed. And so if you know this mele, if you know this chant, I encourage you to stand up and do it with us. I know there's a handful of you in here that might, might just know how. And so we, we want to leave you with this so that we can leave knowing that we are in solidarity with our brothers and sisters on the Mauna. Let's give another round of applause. Yeah. They did great. All right. 
Thank you so much for coming to tonight's First Nations Cultural Millennium Stage performance. We encourage you now to look to the left and enjoy the outdoor installation performance by Amrita Happy. So look right over there. Bye.